Okay, I'm Taylor Schaefer. I'm Tyler Weber. And I'm Marquette Vickers. What we're going to be talking about is a story that took place in my hometown. Uh, I was just scrolling through Facebook one night and I noticed a post where some woman posted that she felt really threatened and she wanted to warn the whole village that this was going on and people were like questioning her saying, uh, well, what really happened? And she wouldn't release any details until she finally said that there were three black males just walking down the street. We don't have any sidewalks, so they were in her yard. And so she said she felt really threatened, even though she had lights on inside and outside, and she just couldn't believe that they would walk in her yard. So people started like really freaking out about it. And I just was really confused what was such a big deal because she wouldn't release any kind of information. And what it all boils down to is that she was racially profiling them. They were black males and she felt really threatened and just were um, a predominantly white little village right outside of Cleveland, Ohio. And I guess she just has some implicit bias that she doesn't realize. And it was harbored into her and she just felt really threatened by it. Uh, one thing that I kind of took it as was, well, what if they were just three white males walking down the street? How would she have reacted? She probably wouldn't have reacted in any such way. And I think that just really hits home. Yeah, I was going to add into that. Like, I the amount of times I've walked through neighbors or random people's yards um, with, like, my friends as a white male, like, I have not one time had anybody post on anything or call the cops or anything on me because they, people view um, white males as uh, less harmful, I guess, just because of the stereotypes um, put on to people of color and which isn't right at all. Like, but that's just what happens in this country. And as well as like, they, the three black males, they didn't do anything, any harm or anything, and they were just walking. I would see if they, like, you know, try to come onto her property, like, more than just, you know, walking down the street. But they were just, you know, minding their business, and they weren't doing anything to harm her, so I don't understand why she even made the post. I would understand it more if they were doing some illegal actions and things, but instead they were just walking down the street and that's what make it bad is because you can't even walk down the street without somebody, you know, stereotyping you or thinking you're trying to do something wrong when in reality you're just being normal. Yeah, it's just a systemic injustice. It's continued down through all of American history. It's just how the media portrays it. It's how just something that's stuck somewhere down inside that no one even is aware of. Um, the implicit association test actually like tests you for this. And um, it's just like noticing any patterns of if you can associate good with white people versus good with black people. And it just um, like, you just, you get your results and it kind of just tells you uh, how you view things. And it's totally unconscious. Like it's just something in your unconscious that you don't even know is happening to the point where it affects stuff in everyday life. You could be at your job, you could be at home, like in this situation, and she just created such a problem out of it. For no reason, yeah. And so in specific to my, the best of my knowledge, the uh, implicit association test, basically how that works is um, there's keys on your keyboard, which uh, I believe it's E and I are for um, good and bad or different sides that you click on. And just basically a picture shows up and you, um, a picture of a white male or female or black male and female show up and you basically click a button, whatever it says to do. Then you do the test with good and bad things. So it'll have like cheerful and you click that for good um, or um, I don't know, drowsy, maybe I can't think of a word as bad, right? So you click that and then basically it says, then it'll link it with uh, a white, a white um, Caucasians and African Americans for good or bad. And basically your response time for those is how it uh, tests if you have uh, implicit bias, just based on how fast you can actually 
submit those answers um, from your brain into clicking a button. And what's so crazy is that you're talking about that test. I actually took that test this last semester and I was so surprised with my results because I'm like, I don't think, I would never have portrayed myself to be, you know, biased to people. But in reality, like I really, you know, show those type of symptoms, I, you know, type of things and don't even realize that I'd be doing things like that. Like, you know, judging by people by their color and, you know, assuming that because of their color that they act a certain way and do certain things. I think it would be really helpful if everyone was aware of what they associated things with, if our whole society just understood that they had these things, because it would help a lot of things to just be aware of it. And um, I know it hit me hard. I was like, there's no way, like, I don't really think I act differently. And I was just like, wow, like, that really hit home. So I really, uh, I think it'd be good for everyone to do it just because I think people don't believe that they do it. And then it just, it'll end up in a really bad situation one time and then they'll realize it. I yeah. just. And you can also like work on like fixing it too. It's not like a thing that's like permanent forever, right? Like you can, people can change their minds. Like even though this test is subconscious and you're not really aware of it at the time, like once you are made aware of it, you can change it. It's not permanent. It's just whether people want to go out and um, go out of their way and change their mindset is the issue, which most people are not willing to do, whether it's too difficult for them, which it's not, or they're, they just really do not care, like, at all, and they just want to continue on their path of racism, basically. And it's really about really getting to know people instead of judging them as well, because if you, you know, you can't just judge people based off their looks and their appearances or what, you know, their race might be because you never know how somebody really is until you really get to know them. Yeah, no, I completely agree. Yeah. And it's like, maybe, you know, maybe the lady could have handled the situation differently. She could have, you know, asked them, hey, what are you guys doing, you know? Or, you know, just, you know, instead of breaking it to Facebook, she could have just, you know, you know, I don't know how to explain it. She could have um, basically just asked them what they were doing around if she felt any harm to her home instead of just assuming that they were probably going to be harmful to the neighborhood or anything like that. She called the police and like, just, she was so upset that it was an 11 minute call time that she waited there for that long. Like they were already gone by that point. They didn't even, they didn't do anything. They just walked through. And sometimes you really don't be able to believe that things like this are really happening. And for me to see that that really is happening, it just kind of makes you really want to think about things differently and react to the situations differently as well. Yeah, the worst part is, is like people, like that could be your neighbor that's doing that and you have no idea like at all. And you're just like, why? Like we've lived next to each other for, I don't know, maybe five years or something like that. And you've never once done, said anything to me like I've been in your yard or something like that. Maybe I didn't even know you that well. And then all of a sudden, just pe random people are doing the same thing that I'm doing. And all of a sudden you're racially profiling them and just assuming the worst instead of just, I, I don't know, maybe just assuming the best. <laughs> I think a lot of it is just uh, the media too. Like one thing that always sticks out to me is when they... Um, uh, when someone is like, they committed a crime or something and they go to use like a mugshot for a black person, but instead of like showing them in a good light, for, like what they do with white people, like it's just horrible. And it's what's always portrayed to us. And we just have to fix that as a society, as opposed to letting it continue to go on because it's just kept happening things over and over again. It's horrible. Yeah, and it's not just one person that can change this. It has to be, like, a conscious effort by basically the whole world to, uh, to just determine that, hey, these things need to be changed, and here's how we're going to do it. Like, for example, like, not showing mug shots for anything. Like, yeah, those are kind of, those are, like, on record, on file, but, like, that's not how people want to be portrayed, Right. You, I mean, you can just as easily like look up a person's mugshot as you can go on their Facebook or Instagram and take a picture. Like, it's basically the same thing. And they just choose to portray anyone 
in the worst possible light, which then creates a bad, bad stigma towards whatever group of people it is. And it just starts to go downhill from there. And people that only look at it in that way, like they don't read into anything. They just like watch what the media is saying and just like build off that. Like those, those people have that one mindset and that one mindset only. And it just creates a, a bad environment for everyone. Definitely. I definitely think that people should be aware of, you know, and have knowledge of different things that have a one-sided mind. Yeah, I think just being open-minded about everything would solve so many problems in this country. Just like, just being okay and accepting of everyone. It's just, it's just constantly happening. Not even in just this situation. It happens all over. And like linking it back to the, just like the story of the the kids walking through the yard, like what, what time of day was this? It was at night, it was at 11. So there instantly, she's assuming the worst because these kids are out at 11 o'clock at night. She's assuming, oh, they're going to go rob something. They're going to go uh, um, vandalize something. They're going to go do something illegal instead of just like, hey, maybe they're just trying to get home. Exactly. Right. And do you guys think that the lady probably would have reacted differently if it wasn't at nighttime? I do. I actually do think they, that she would have, which which is which is bad because because it's nighttime, so she's assuming the worst. And then on top of that, they are African American kids, which is just doubling down on like her worst assumptions, which are completely false. Right.